So today I'm going to look at my power supply. I was using this a couple of days ago and it made a funny noise and I could smell something. It still seemed to carry on working though, so that was a bit interesting. So I'm going to pull it apart and have a look and find out what that was. First thing, we'll just double check voltages and stuff like that before we pull it apart and see what I'm actually dealing with. I'm waiting for a new power supply. It hasn't arrived yet. I've got a new signal and power supply coming. Should be here soon. That's working. Yep, yeah, that's good. That's good. And the 5 volts. All good. All three rails are working. I definitely heard something and smelt something. So I think I need to actually investigate that. Even though it seems to be working. Actually, let's check AC, shall we? See if we've got any AC ripple coming out of it. Let's just do that. Look, this is linear supply, so it should be able to see anything there. That's basically nothing there. I think there's no load though, so. Yeah, there's nothing there either. And this one. Yeah, there's nothing really there. So, what caused it? I don't know. Let's pull it apart and find out. Now, I've had this power supply for probably about six, seven years, and like since basically since I started doing YouTube. When I started doing YouTube, I bought this power supply. It was around a sort of time, same sort of kind of time frame, so it's had a few years on it. And yeah, it's had a bit of abuse. <laughs> As bench power supplies tend to get. That screw won't even actually undo. Yeah, so we'll see if we go with this. I don't know. Guess that one's a bit stripped. Rubbish, I think. <laughs> Is this rubbish trapped underneath it? Oh no, it's the feet disintegrating. <laughs> the feet are disintegrating on it. Time for new feet as well then. It just keeps growing, doesn't it, this project? Eh? Oh wait, I haven't got anything open yet, the project's already growing. Right. Let's find out what's inside. Right. Right, what we got in here? Let's rip it over. What's that noise? Oh, this fell out. It's a diode. Well, half a diode. Well, there's a clue. Something to do with this piece. <laughs> oh dear, that's not good. And I think I found it. Okay, right. I'll show you inside first. So, oh, there's some more floating around. Um, it's probably the other half of it. Hold on. Yeah, there's the other half of the diode. Interesting. Okay, well, we've got a spare cable which doesn't go anywhere. Curious. Main power supply board at the back there. This fan doesn't actually run that much. It's actually a pretty quiet power supply. I quite like it doesn't run that much, it only ramps up when it needs to, it's thermally controlled, so it's quite good. I was looking at the capacitor, see if there's any bulging ones because of the age, but no, they're looking good. At the front, we've got the control electronics, so you know, here's the rear of the front panel. So you've got some switching relays here because it does uh, serious parallel switching internally as well, so that's what relays are doing. We've got a little coil here which is just out of shot, which is current sense coil. So yep, yeah, there's the current sense coil there. So a little current sense resistor. Another one over there for each channel. So it's got three channels. One is 5R fixed output and the other two are adjustable. It's also got a few localized capacitors for the back of the board here. Lots of electronics on there. I'm quite surprised how much there is on here. There's a diode there. And there's what used to be a diode here. Yeah. Well there's your problem. <laughs> D18 seems to have decided to give it up. Well, at least it's a simple fix. We'll desolder it, solder a new one in. Capacitor is rated 105 degrees, that's nice to see. I think taking that board out will be a pain, so I'm going to do it in place. I will just remove those legs and solder a new one in. Now, when this failed, it might have actually been my fault. I'm not entirely sure. I was working on a battery pack at the time, and I may have brushed against the terminal of a neighbouring cell 
and accidentally reverse polarity. I may have blown it up when I was moving the probes around. I think I may have done that, but I'm not 100% sure. It's just suspicion that I was working on the pack and then that happened as I was moving cables around. I'm going to put the fresh shoulder on first and then um, remove them. In a way, it's could have been much worse than it was because it melted and disintegrated instead of burning up and short destroying the circuit boards. So, and it's looped around on the back of the board. Of course, it is. There you go. That's that one. Trying to get the new one could be a bit tricky. That's easier. Right, let's set out. Obviously it's not passing through that diode, it's across the terminals. We can verify that actually. It makes sense to verify it instead of assuming what it's doing. Buzzer. Go to that terminal there. Yep, that's on the negative terminal. And yep, positive terminal, so yep, it's across the terminals. So it is a reverse clarity protection system, so hey, if I brush across it, this diode probably saved the entire power supply and sacrificed itself. So we should definitely honour that diode, because it probably saved the rest of it. <laughs> That's what they're for. Let me try and get this out of here. I may need to add some flux. It's kind of awkward to work on sideways. But I want to get the holes cleared out, so I can put the new diode in. The flux just helps the solder to flow and hopefully wick up and get out of the holes. Hopefully. Hopefully. Second one's not cooperating as well. Can't you see if that's clear or not? Let's get and get a diode and find out. So this diode, which blew up, is a uh, 1N5408, which is a 1000 volt rated diode and 3 amps. What I've got here to substitute with is a SR5100, which is a 100 volt diode rated at 5 amps. So the current handling capacity is going to be slightly increased, but the voltage is going to be lower. Because these are cross the outputs of this thing, 100 volts should be adequate, because most of these outputs go to is like 31. So that should be pretty safe unless they get a high voltage reversed onto it or something, maybe, but then it will blow. But it's got a 5 amps capacity instead of 3 amps, so I think it's probably a safe substitute. It's probably not ideal, I'd rather keep the original, but you know, this is a 5 amp diode. Anyway, let's see if these holes are cleared out. Let's just show it in first. That hole is cleared out. The top hole is also cleared out. Great, they are both cleared out. So that will go in. So let's get this bent into shape and cut down to length so I can get the thing in there. So I've bent it round to roughly the right shape. I'm going to cut these legs down. I do have a bit of leeway on the length because there is a big cavity behind it. So I can actually have these legs very slightly longer. It gives me a bit of opportunity there to bend them and adjust things if I need to. Okay, so there's that one there. And that one there. Of course I stand off the board slightly to help that heat dissipation issue if it does have heat dissipation issues. Let's fit this in. So I've decided to stand this up on its end. I think it might make it easy to get this in because it is otherwise really awkward. And unfortunately my hands are probably going to be in the way of trying to have you see what I'm doing. Yeah, I didn't quite get that spacing quite right. That's right, we'll get it in there. Okay, we'll pull that back out. It's not quite wide enough. Adjust it a little bit. better. There we go, right, both in there. So what I want to do is lift it very slightly, get it away from the circuit board, and solder that in. Come on. Lighting here is a bit crap I'm afraid. There we go. 
Yeah, that just dropped. <laughs> of course it dropped. I actually want it to be lifted off the board. Yeah. Just very slightly off. I just prefer to do that with parts which might get hot. Alright, that should be good. I'll even put it right around, hopefully. <laughs> so I'm going to resolder this shunt because it looks like it might, I don't know, because it's probably lead free solder. I just don't trust it to not be cracking. So I'm going to just freshen that one up a little bit. And the other one, because I'm not looking not the best solder joints on there. So I mean, that's. Not ideal there. I was going to touch that one up and make it slightly better. I'm probably just being fussy. I mean, it's always worked fine. I've never had issues with it. But while I'm in here, I might as well just freshen those up a little bit. Because I do get thermally stressed. You know, thermal cycling on and stuff and that sort of stuff. So Quite a large thermal mass there because of the binding post being right next to it. So I'm not going to turn the iron up. It's only set at 290. All right. And I might just look at the other one as well, see if that one looks okay. I can't get to one of them anyway. I'll just do the one I can get to because it's also looking marginal, actually. It's probably fine. I'm just seeing a mark on it, which makes me suspicious. Like I said, I've never had any problems with them. It's always worked fine. And you can see what I was doing because this is in the way. I saw it in that bit. Anyway. Okay, that should be good now. So the diode blowing is also explains why it made a noise, made a smell, and continued to work just fine. It obviously did its job and protected the unit. Well, let's just make sure, plug it in, power it up, make sure it doesn't go bang. Seems fine. <laughs> Paste the check before you put it back together. Output. All good. Right, that's all right. I'm happy enough with that. I mean, all the capacitors and stuff look fine. I don't think I need to do any servicing on it as far as that goes. If I'd seen even one bulging cap, I would have been stripping the whole lot out and replacing them. But they all look perfectly good. Working, happy with that. It's fixed. Like I said, I've got a new power supply coming soon. I think this one new. Well, the next thing I need to do is replace these feet. So I've just taken off the one which is torn. I actually do have brand new feet here. I've got a stock of them for things I need to fix. So hopefully, these will go on nicely. And that will be that solved as well. Screw goes in, it'll hold it, that's yes, alright. So I'll do that to all his feet, I'm sure you don't you know you don't really need to see me doing this do you? But this is why I keep these sorts of things in stock. That's why I do mail bags and I buy these bits of curiosities and things like that, things which might come in handy. And this is exactly why I do that because if I didn't have these on hand right now I have to order these from somewhere and then wait for them to turn up for weeks and then I could replace the feet. Whereas right now it's all just done. You know, done, out of the way, don't have to worry about it. And I can move on with my life. <laughs> anyway, that's two feet done. I'll do the other ones and I'll put it back. And there you go, back in its home. Still works. My new power supply turns up. This will come back out again. My new power supply go in its place. So I've been happy with this one. I've had no problems with it apart from this one thing with his diode, which is blown up, which I think was my mistake. I'm not 100% sure, but I think I made that mistake and then caused that to happen. So at least I can fix it myself, which is a good thing. When I do replace this power supply, I'm not going to get rid of it. I'm going to move it out into my lab and use it out there. I don't, I don't know what I'll do with it yet. I might even stick it to one side over here somewhere. Sometimes you need more than one power supply. You need multiple things. So I don't know. We'll see. But anyway, it's fixed. That's great. Subscribe over here if you're not already subscribed. Patreon support link just over there if you want to help to pay for the power supply which I've just purchased and other videos to watch down there. Catch you later.